Meyer finishing up his warm-up pitches. King taking infield as we are almost set to go. Cloudy overcast day. There's Apparently I heard somebody say when they just got here there was a little bit of a sprinkle. but um, it Just sprinkled at the end of that game. Just, okay. Like, you know, just enough for you to feel it, which right. didn't feel too bad. The sun is out right now on the field. We aren't really expecting any rain. The radar looks clear. It's about, they say it's about a 20% chance of, of rain for the remainder of the period, but we'll have... Baseball, hopefully for you later on tonight, if Craig were to win this, it's the Cougars and Heartland Arrowhead. And you would assume that that game will be a little bit later start time than the scheduled 8.30 uh, book time. So we will uh, we'll stick with you. If, uh, if the Cougars somehow lose in this opener, we'll have Cubs baseball and the Brewers for you in game You'll two of that series. Baseball. You'll have Brewers, well, Brewers baseball. baseball. I'm sorry. Let's not go crazy here. How many warm-up pitches does he get here? Let's go. He's... So Meyer, a lefty throw, goes down to second, and we are about set to go here at Fox City Stadium as Dan Blumgren will come to the plate and lead it off for Janesville Craig. Blumgren hitting 359. He's got 28 hits on the season, seven for doubles, one triple. He's driven in 14. He's also a guy to watch if you get on base because he has stolen a few. Official steal numbers not in the media guide provided for us here at State. But we know that the Cougars have stolen well over 100 as a team, and King has stolen over 60, so we'll see whether they want to test that. Blumgren steps in, and here's the opening pitch. Squares to Bunt, draws it back, but it's a strike call in the outside corner, and we are underway here in Grand Shoot. 0-1 the count to Dan Blumgren. Meyer gets what he wants. Here's the windup and the pitch. Inside. And a little bit low for a ball. Even at one and one. Do they know how fast this guy was throwing coming in? It's a good question. A... And they have I think that this ballpark would have like a radar gun. Here's the next pitch. It's fouled away back to the screen by Blumgren. One and two now on the Cougar third baseman. They don't. We searched quite a bit during the last oh, game trying to, okay. trying to find one because we thought that the Burlington pitcher, he's got a nice curveball, but we wondered how fast he threw and couldn't find it. Well, I know all the coaches carry their little pocket radar guns. They're always timing, guys. Here's the one two. Swung on and fouled into the seats, third base side. And it'll stay at one and two for Blumgren. Scored 31 runs. He gets on base. Good chance for him to score. And Craig to get the lead. Meyer gets the sign, and here's the pitch. Hit to short. Nata Panette up with it, throws to first, and there is out number one as Blumgren grounds to the shortstop. One up and one down for the Cougars, and now catcher Jacob Campbell. Panette, one of the freshmen and also leadoff hitter, also leading guy at the plate. Looks like a pretty good ball player. Campbell steps in, hitting 429. He's got three homers on the season, and he's also driven in 25. Headed to the University of Illinois to play college ball. Opening pitch by Meyer. Here it is. Swing and a miss by Jacob. Good stuff. Yep. Low, down low in the zone. Keeping it down low, which is what you got to do, especially against the, the top of this Craig order. It's top, really mash it. Yes. For sure. That was the exact the mash word was what I was going to use. Wind up and the 0-1. Campbell, foul third base side. Into the dugout of... Milwaukee, Rufus King. Cougars have the first base dugout as the visiting squad. King on third base as the home team. You always see some jitters, even if you've been here before. For sure. Um, in the first inning, it seems like. So Campbell steps back in. He's behind 0 2 on Meyer. And the wind up. Here's the pitch. Outside, and Campbell goes with it and fouls it into the seat's third base side past the dugout. Case in point, Burlington and Arrowhead, those are teams that oh have been my. here before. In the Holy first inning moly. last game, Burlington uh, got a guy picked off first by a mile. It wasn't even close you at the top played, of the first inning. You could and have then, played the Benny Hill theme song for some of these. Then the bottom of the first, Arrowhead uh, runner, I think, it was that inning where... Uh, Squared to bunt. Yeah. And then there was another one where a runner wins going from second to third. 0-2 pitch outside. Campbell chases it and goes down on strikes. Rare strikeout for Jacob Campbell. That is just his fifth one of the year. But he goes down, and there's two up and two down for Luke Ballmanger, the first baseman. 
Well, yeah, there was. A, I turned it into a. Uh, a t- he, he went from second. He didn't. He straight too far off on a grounder to third base, so it turned into like a five four six four five double play. <laughs> <laughs> Opening pitch to Malmanger, letter high for a ball. Well, they chased him back to second and they tagged him out, and then the runner from first went all the way to second, and the ball was waiting for him when he got there. It was unbelievable. Here's the 1-0 to Malmanger, low and inside for ball two, two and nothing to the Cougar first baseman who's hitting 437 on the year. Wind up in the pitch from Meyer. That's a strike taken by Luke. I told him this week, I said, any other year, you've been a pretty fine candidate for Big 8 Player of the Year, except you had to except for your teammate. <laughs> play with Jake Campbell. Malmanger ahead 2-1 in the count. Here's Myers' pitch, and that's hit to right. But right at the right fielder, Kashan Nelson, and he makes the catch. And the Cougars go three up, three down in the first. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. Bottom of the first coming up. Craig nothing, and the Generals coming to bat. We'll be back after this from the Citrus Cafe on WCLO Janesville Beloit and online at WCLO.com. Mike Overly on the mound for Janesville Craig. Infield for the Cougars. Third base is Blumgren. Berghammer at short. Hessling at second. Malmanger at first. Outfield left to right is Ross March, J.J. Brennan, and Tressen Cussmall. And behind the plate will be Jacob Campbell. So three up, three down for the Cougars offensively. And that'll bring up the Milwaukee King Generals. And Nata Panette, the shortstop, who's carrying a 403 average. He's got 27 hits, only five for extra bases, and he's also driven in 22. He's taken a fair share of walks and doesn't strike out that much either. Did you get a pronunciation guy? Or I am, I'm just going, going gonna, with what you're going with. I'm going to try and listen to the PA guy with one headphone on and one off to see, go see well. how bad I'm butchering these. And here's the opening pitch by Overly. It's inside for a ball. Pops out of the mount, the mitt of Jacob Campbell. And it's 1-0. and Overly's next offering. In there for a ball. Hmm, interesting. So Panette ahead 2 and nothing on Overly. Here's the third pitch. There's a strike. 2-1. I would describe Panetta as uh, six feet tall, and about five foot two of them are legs. <laughs> That's a very good description. Two one pitch from Overly, swung on, hit to the third base coach's box. E. That's an E on him. We've got our first error of the game on Coach Wozniak. <laughs> Not officially. Don't put the no, official I, no, book I'm at home. There's some people probably scoring this at home. I would imagine. No. Two two the count to Panette. We're ahead of the scoreboard. Here it is. Down low for ball three. He's run it full now. Good spot for it. Yep. Full count now on Nata Panette from Micah Overly. And the offering. Down low and a leadoff walk issued to Panette. And now here's Daryl Jackson, also a freshman, who if I'm reading this correctly... And I never know whether I am or not. Has struck out 52 times. <laughs> that seems like a gigantic number. I don't think that's right because okay. they only have him for 50 at bats. Okay. So well, something then, tells me there's something so a little wrong. There's there. either two or five. Take your pick. Here's the opening pitch to Jackson. Tried to lay down a bunt. Fouled it back to the screen. Runner on first for King to lead things off. And Overly's ahead of the second hitter, Jackson, 0-1. There was, oh, there's another fun number. Oh, I saw the job, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, Bear pointed that one out to us the (laughs) other day. Cameron on the floor with 2,024 (laughs) runs scored this year. (laughs) Ball one to Jackson outside from Overly. Evens it up at a ball and a strike. Bottom of the first, no score. Milwaukee King at the plate. Nobody out in a runner on first. As Jackson gets back into the box, gets the sign from Coach Wozniak. Overly checks first. Malmanger holding Panette. And here's the pitch. Runner goes. There's the throw by Campbell. And he is out by a mile. 
So they try to steal on their first base runner, and Campbell guns him down, throws a little bit to the left of second base, but a good job by Berghammer reaching across for the swipe tag, and Panette is cut down. So one out. They're going to learn real quick. You pr- There's a reason he's only got one base stolen. Yeah, I'm guessing that might be the last time they try that for a little bit. Here's the pitch, and it's popped up. Might stay in here. It's going to be close to the dugout. Malmanger over, and he makes the grab about three feet from the Cougar dugout railing. And there's two down. Now Cameron LaFleur, the center fielder, will be the batter. LaFleur, second leading average on the team. With a 339, he's also scored 2,024 runs. <laughs> it's a new record. <laughs> Milwaukee City Conference record, yes. <laughs> Opening pitch from Overly. And there's a swing and a miss. Well, the amount of time that it takes to input all these statistics for these books and print them up oh, yeah. in a week, I, I, I'm willing to give them a little leeway. That's why I did check the program, though, because I put it out early and say, hey, if you have any corrections by this date, let us know. And But also I looked to see if maybe by the time they printed the official program, it was fixed, but no such luck. Ball down low from Overly. Evens at a ball and a strike on Lafleur. I want to say Lafleur from... Dodgeball, but it's LaFleur. There's a dribbler to second. Hessling charges. He's got it on a hop. Flip to Malmanger. And the Cougars take care of Rufus King in the bottom of the first. So no runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left. One complete. No score between Craig and Milwaukee King. We'll return after this from CTR Firearms and Automotive and Da Vinci Power Coating on WCLO Janesville Beloit and online at WCLO.com. Bottom of the, or top of the second coming up. So used to Craig or Parker being home. Yeah. This is the first time we've called a game with one of the two teams being visitors this year. Do up, no Berghammer, the shortstop, Tresson Cussmall, the right fielder, and the center fielder, J.J. Brennan. So the four, five, and six spots. Berghammer will lead it off. Noah comes in this year for this tournament, batting 342. He's got 26 base hits. He's also scored 26 runs. He's got nine extra base hits, five doubles, three triples, and a bomb. Opening pitch from Meyer is inside for a ball. Heading to Minnesota next year. I, I, yep. I didn't see Minnesota in the Super Regionals, but they were there. They made Super yep. Regionals. Yes, they did. I, I've watched a little bit of that on TV. There have been some really fun college games. Well, that was the talk of the Craig coaching staff last night at dinner. They were talking college baseball. Berghammer takes the strike, squared to bunt, pulled back, but it falls into the zone. It's one and one on the senior shortstop. Wind up in the pitch from Meyer, and that is a ball. Two and one. Tight strike zone Pretty from tight. start the game, yeah. Mr. Home plate umpire in this ball game. Four man crew. That's Larry Holshoe. Okay. There's a pitch low and inside, and it's 3-1 and one on Berghammer. Had some local guys working the uh, first two quarterfinal games up here today. Mm-hmm. I don't recognize these names. Mike File, maybe. Here's the 3-1 delivery from Meyer. Ripped to the left field, and it's down. It's going to get into the corner. It's down the line. Berghammer rounding second. He's got he's got around first, rather. He's got second easily and holds up as the throw comes into the infield. Nice line drive to lead things off in the top of the second. Down the line and left. Turned on that one and put it into the corner. Right near the foul pole. That's uh, really what the Cougars needed to start this inning. After the, I, I thought the first inning, their top of their order is usually very confident. And I, I thought some kind of defensive swings to start the state tournament. And uh, Noah leads off the second there with uh, just rips that one right yeah, down the line. Yeah, he did. Turned on, turned on it and let it rip. So now the batter will be Tresson Cussmall, runner at second in scoring position, squares to bunt, uh, pulls back, and it's on the outside corner for strike one. Cusmall coming in, hitting 315. He's driven in 17, chance to make it 18 with a base hit here. Meyer out of the stretch. Nobody holding. Berghammer squares to bunt. First baseman is all the way in, and it's popped up, and Meyer's going to get to that. Berghammer's got to hustle back. No throw as the bunt goes right to Meyer on the fly. So Cusmall is gone, and now it'll be J.J. Brennan. 
Yikes. Yeah, you can't. You Miss, just can't have that. Nope, miss Q on that one. J.J. Brennan hitting 339. I think it was almost like Tresson got caught off guard a little bit. It, was almost, it kind of looked like the pitcher was going to spin to throw to second a little bit, and then he came home. It was kind of just a little herky-jerky. Here's the opening pitch from Meyer. It's in there for a strike taken by Brennan. 0-1-1, one out. Runner at second is Berghammer. Meyer checks second. Quick pitch out of the stretch. That wasn't that wasn't much to that. No, that's what, kind of how he, uh, the first couple here have been. But when he was throwing to Cusmall for the bunt, it was much more uh, deliberate. And now looks like hmm. there's gonna be, there's a problem with the mound, or is there a clarification from the second base umpire about? Maybe where Meyer is standing on the mound as he looks at second and then comes to the plate. It doesn't look like there was a warning issued or anything like that. Something that he mentioned, though, because then he looked back and said, is this cool? Right, right guy exactly. Said, yep, you're good. 1-1 one, one pitch coming up, and here it is. Outside, 2-1. and one. That was a you see that? long look at second, and then he came to the plate. When, his, when he lifts his right knee, it almost it goes backwards right. a little bit. So that's why I think Cusmall got thrown off on his bunt attempt a little bit. First time seeing him out of the stretch, really. 2-1, and one, the count to Brennan. Here it is. A bouncer to third, wide of the bag, and into left field. Short, though, for the left fielder, and the throw home is right on target. And Brennan, Great job by Brennan. easily takes second. Second base, so he'll, be, he'll get a single and take second on the throw, and Berghammer to third. Cougars with two on, second and third, and only one out. That was a really good job by Brennan. He turned and never, never slowed down. As soon as uh, you know, I assume Yaucher's over there, Coach Yaucher, mm-hmm. saying throws going home, keep going. Yep, and he just never stopped. Went straight to second base. So now here's Clark Schmaling, the designated hitter. Schmaling with a 318 average. He's driven in 15. Craig trying to take the lead. Two on. And one out here in the top of the second. Opening pitch coming from Meyer. He squares to bunt. That's up high for a ball as Schmeling draws back. No score yet, but Cougars threatening two base hits in the inning. Runners at second and third. State baseball tournament quarterfinals. Last quarterfinal of the day. 1-0 pitch. Here it is from Meyer. That's taken for a strike. One and one on Schmeling. One out. Double play not a factor here. Just get one to the outfield. Everybody's playing pretty straight up. And here's the pitch. Inside a ball. Two and one. He hasn't called the, that on the no. inside corner at all. The, the umpire in the last game was given that one a lot. There was a few Riverside strikes here at Fox City Stadium. We got to, I got to hear uh, Tim O'Driscoll, the speaker from the Janesville Hall of Fame, chirping, uh, chirping a little bit from the Arrowhead dugout. <laughs> First baseman is up on the grass. So is third, preparing for a bunt. 2-1 pitch coming up. Here it is. Swing and a drive to right. Back on it. This is going to give the Cougars the lead as Kashawn Nelson will throw it back into the first baseman. And Craig is up one to nothing on an RBI sack fly from Clark Schmeling. Brennan advances to third. Berghammer comes in to score. Did a job. Yep. So Schmeling with the RBI. There's two outs. Brennan's at third. And now the batter will be Jacob Hessling. The second baseman who's carrying a 275 average. Still one more out there for Hessling if he can get something together. Opening pitch, and here it is. High a ball from Meyer, 1 and 0. Here's the windup and the pitch. There's a first inside strike. Called in this ball game, one and me. one. Probably, your your voice carries a little bit past that pane of glass yeah, in front of very you. Very helpful. <laughs> one one. The count to Hessling. 
And here it is. Swing and a shot pass first base into right field. It's 2 nothing. Janesville Craig on another RBI. This time from Hessling on the single. Cougars third hit. It's 2 to nothing as Brennan scores. Watch. Just uh, took the outside pitch and just pushed it through past uh, between first and second baseman. Three hits in the inning. Two runs are in. And now the batter will be Ross March as the Cougars will make it through the lineup. <laughs> Hessling just dove back in, back into first. There was not even a throw over. He was just uh, getting dirty. Okay. Checking it out. 294, the batting average for the senior, Ross March. And the pitch, runner goes, pulls back on a bunt, takes the strike, and the throw down, and the runner's safe. Throw beat him there, but the second baseman, Daryl Jackson, was in front of the bag and had to go back to try and make the tag, and good job by March swiping one on the backside of the of the base. Well, that's what he was getting ready for when he dove into first. He just wanted to see. He wanted to know how about that head first slide was going to feel. Okay. So runner at second now. It's 0-1 to March. Here's the pitch. High and outside for ball one. 1-1 one one the count. Craig is up 2 to nothing here in the top of the second. And Jacob Meyer throwing some... Showing some signs of frustration on the mound. Taking his glove off. Doing a little circle. Top of the second. And Craig already with the lead. I would say outside of uh, Berghammer's double to lead off the inning. It's not like he's throwing bad pitches. There's a smash to center. Back on it is Cameron LaFleur. And makes the catch. And that will do it. But Craig strikes first. Two runs. Three hits. No errors. One man left. We go to the bottom of the second. Craig with the lead. It's two to nothing. Cougars. We'll return after this from Schneider Funeral Home and Crematory on WCLO Janesville Beloit. And online at WCLO.com. Bottom of the second coming up for the Milwaukee Rufus King Generals. And it'll be the four, five, six spots. Thomas Panette, Kashan Nelson, and Manny Akpan. You asked if I was tweeting. You know, I got all the handles of even all the guys here on my little roster over here. So when they single or double like or something, it. I can tag them in it. Well, let's hope they're not retweeting in the dugout. I'm not sure phones are allowed. Thomas Panette smashes one to left. It's going to get foul, but man, was that hit a mile. 325 to the foul poles. It goes as it uh, goes foul. Panette doesn't have any homers, but he turned on that one and launched it. So overly ahead, 0-1 on Thomas Panette, who's hitting 333. Curveball fouled back third bar- first base side. And onto the rooftop, and it rolls down. Oh, no, no, no catch made. 0-2 the count on Thomas Panette. Overly kicks and fires outside for ball one. Good play on a foul ball in the last game by uh, former Cougar Steve Sanfilippo out oh, there. flips here? Yeah. Excellent. Here's the one-two. Swing and a pop to right. Cus Small goes to his right about three steps and makes the grab, and there's one up and one down. And now Keyshawn Nelson, also another freshman, will be the batter. He would have been between you and I at Craig, right? San Filippo? Yeah. Yes. And then I, then I found him here in this record book. I was just kind of looking through some stuff. There was a one hitter that he and uh, Brian Spielman combined on here in 2001. And a swing and a miss from Nelson. And it's 0-1. Overly shakes off Campbell. Now he has what he wants. Here's the windup. And a foul back to the screen. Quickly 0-2 to the left-handed hitting Nelson. Also above 300, 320. Pretty good season as a freshman. He's got one homer. He's driven in 25. And the pitch from Overly at 0-2. High for a ball. 1-2 and two on Nelson. Got to think Overly goes back out there now with a lot of confidence. Get a lead early on. He's probably feeling pretty good. Here's the pitch. Check swing. Campbell appeals to third, and they said that Nelson held up. It's 2-2. Two and two. <laughs> That was awfully friendly of them, wasn't it? That's what I thought. So the right fielder now. Even now at 2-2, two and two, here's Overly's pitch. Swing and a foul just past the Cougar dugout. 
as it rolls all the way down into the tarp. Still two and two. We'll do it again. Here in the bottom of the second, here's the pitch. Outside, full count now from Overly. Excellent hustle by Tyler Splann, assistant coach of the Cougars, to uh, get down there and get that foul ball off the tarp. Taking his time. Here's the pitch. Swung and hit to right, and it's going to be shallow towards the line. Foul, and will bounce onto the little hilly area, and we'll do it again on a full count. March was out there, as was Hessling and Malmanger, right by the tarp where that previous foul wound up. So we'll do it again, full count. Craig up two to nothing, bottom half of the second inning. And there's one out and a full count. Overlease pitch. Fouled and off the chest protector of Jacob Campbell. And we'll stay at three and two. Campbell with a quick word to Overly as he walks the ball out just into the grass area in the infield. Still 3-2 on Keyshawn Nelson. Overly can't get rid of him. He's going to try with this pitch. Here it is. Swung on in a little looping liner that's foul by about five feet right field side. And we'll do it again. We've got our first uh, double-digit pitch at bat here. Okay. This will be the 10th. How are we at with uh, Overly here in the second? Oh, looks like 27. So the 28th pitch coming up. And Overly has what he wants. Here he comes to Campbell. Check swing and fouled it off away from Jacob. (laughs) Just uh, staying alive here. I guess. Stayed at full here for a few minutes with the right fielder, freshman right fielder for Rufus King. Another windup. Here it is. Swung on and hit to right. This one is going to be playable if uh, March can get there. Diving or Cusmall, he can't make the play. But it's foul. It is a foul ball. Glove came off of Tresson in foul territory, but will stay full now. Nelson likes that line. He's ahead of pretty much everything he's been offered from Overly. What else did he lose down that line? Yeah, there's something sticking out there. Maybe a, little, a batting uh, glove or a that could be. sweat rag or something. Cusball now a couple of steps towards the foul line. Here's the 3-2 again. Swing and a miss, and Overly gets him. Overly's first strikeout, two up and two down. Only took 12 pitches to get it. And now the first baseman, Manny Ekpan. Ekpan, a 258 hitter. He is the catcher for the Generals. Says he's the catcher, but today he's playing first base. Curveball drops in. Nice job from Overly. Much to the chagrin of the general faithful, Mm -hmm. of which there are... All 13 of them. (laughs) Here's the pitch. Swung on and out ahead of that. And pulls it down the third baseline foul between the bag and Coach Herbst as now it careens off the bullpen area and into fair territory. That probably wasn't very nice. There's like 100 of them. You think there's decent Craig contingency? You think there's a hundred Milwaukee King fans here? Yeah. Oh man, you had your eyes checked. I'll I'll count them between innings for you. It's 0-2 to Akpan. Here's Overly's pitch. Curveball, and he goes down, and another strikeout. One, two, three, go the Generals. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. Two complete. It's two nothing, Janesville Craig. So Jacob Meyer going to stay out for Milwaukee King. As the throw goes down to second from Thomas Panette. And Craig will start at the top of the order. Cougars up 2 nothing, and it'll be Dan Blumgren who grounded to short to open the ballgame. Top of the third here at Fox City Stadium. Sun's out, intermittent cloud cover. Looking for a pretty good next couple of days to complete the state tournament here in Appleton. A little warm and humid. For tonight's game, you should broadcast from those big Adirondack chairs out there, I think. That would be awesome. Can I get a table that size, too? 
And the first pitch taken by Blumgren for a strike from Meyer. It's 0-1. For those that haven't been here, by big Adirondack chairs, I mean like you can fit probably family. Like 20 kids on there if you want. Here's the pitch. Another taken strike by Blumgren. That one in the outside corner looked like a little bit of a bender from Meyer. 0-2. The Craig third baseman behind in the count. And here's the pitch. Swung on a little bloop to right, and no chance that Keyshawn Nelson gets that. And Blumgren with a leadoff single. Fourth hit for the Cougars. And the opening man on for Jacob Campbell, the catcher, a strikeout victim in his opening at bat. I think the pregame jitters and first time up kind of stuff has since passed. Yeah, once you get uh, through the your first at bat or maybe even just through the first inning, I feel like they settle in. That pitch definitely caught too much of the plate for an 0-2 pitch. I would guess the coaches would tell him, hey, let's nibble a little bit more. Here's Campbell and a throw back to first. Runner standing up. Opening pitch. Still yet to come here on Campbell. Blomgren away from first. And here's the pitch. That was interesting. Campbell takes for a ball. There was about a double or triple take to first. Yeah, well, well, well his leg was in the air. Between first and home. <laughs> That's a new one. Coach Herps giving the signs. He's got a real-life bobblehead out there. Right. The what, 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 what? It's kind of one of those things. Checking first and home. And here's the pitch to Campbell, taken for a strike. It's one and one. That time, just a quick yep. motion home. Just, just a quick pitch home. So it's one and one on Campbell. There goes Blumgren, swing and a miss for strike two. And the throw down is not in time. And Blumgren swipes a bag, second stolen base for the Cougars. And Campbell is behind one and two as that one was called a strike. So Campbell now up. We talked about in the pregame, two games, two teams that really like to run. So far, Craig, two for two. So far, King, 0 for 1. <laughs> right. I think that's uh, that that should easily be noted as well. So 1 and 2 the count. And the pitch to Campbell outside a ball, even at 2 and 2. 2 nothing, Craig. Nobody out. Runner at second is Blumgren. And the upcoming pitch as Meyer trying to find what he wants. Nobody holding Campbell. Nobody even heading over to second base, or Blumgren rather. Here it is Campbell with a grounder to short. Going to have to hustle with this throw, and he's out at first. Blumgren moves to third. So Campbell moves the runner on a ground out to the shortstop, and there's one away for Luke Mulmanger, the first baseman. Got him by about half a step over there. Kind of a slow little dribbler off the end of the bat. Mm -hmm. Malmanger, his first time up with a fly to right. So 0 for 1 today. Craig trying to add another run. Here it is. Smashed right back up the middle over Meyer's head. Winged him a little bit. He immediately took his hat off. That might have got, <laughs> caught a piece of the bill or something. Felt the breeze was yeah. on high. <laughs> so it's an RBI for Malmanger on just a rifle back through the box. And it is now 3 to nothing. Janesville Craig. Malmanger's at first for Noah Berghammer. And an RBI for Luke. It's the fifth hit for Craig. And third baseman Liam Sullivan coming over to just kind of say, yo, man, don't worry about it. We got you. One out. Berghammer with a double and scored the game's opening run. Ballmanger away from first. And here's the opening pitch. Inside corner, there's another one. Well, we see Luke Malminger attempt to steal a base. Not sure we're going to go that far. 
However, very fleet of foot. Not sure whether we're going to do that. 3-0. Here's the pitch. Gets away from the bag. Berghammer takes another strike. It's 0-2 to the Cougar shortstop. 13 for 13 on the year. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Most of them early on. They t- okay. they found some catchers they could take advantage of, and, and he like, right. had like two or three in one game. Okay. Here's the 0-2 coming up. Berghammer swings and misses, and he is down on strikes. Might have gotten a piece of it, but it did wind up in Panette's glove. So Berghammer goes down for the second out, and here's Tressen Cussmall. Malmanger still at first. One run is in for Craig. 3 nothing, top of the third. Cussmall, a... Bunt attempt to the first base. There goes Malmanger. Late throw down, and Luke is in there for the stolen base. Yeah, I called it. 14 for 14. That's what you want from your first baseman, right? So with a third stolen base for the Cougars, he's at second. And the pitch was a ball. And Cussmall now with a 1-0 count. Malmanger in scoring position. Craig, 3-for-3. Three three. Right. One zero pitch coming up to Cussmall. Here it is. Quick pitch from Meyer. Fouls it up, and it'll get out of play first base side. And wind up in the mezzanine area. Yeah, what do we is call that? The, call uh, that? The, the porch? I don't know. We got suites up there? I know. What are we doing in here? I'll call a game from a suite. Private bathroom up there, anybody? That'd be nice. Probably one in each one. All right. Here it is. There's a line drive back up the middle again into the outfield. LaFleur comes up with it. Mulmanger being waved around. Here's the throw. It's cut off at the mound. And Mulmanger is in on an RBI single from Cusmall. Luke making the rounds. And it's 4 nothing, Janesville Craig. Not a very strong arm from center field on a throw. I don't even honestly know why that was cut off and thrown to the plate. I don't either. I, <laughs> I thought he was cutting it off to make sure the runner didn't go to second. So Cusmall at first. And the batter will be J.J. Brennan, who singled and scored in the second. 4 nothing, Craig. Six hits for the Cougars. Runner at first is Cusmall. Still two out. And the opening pitch from Meyer is high a ball. One and oh. How do they are we at two and one already? Okay. Thank you, scoreboard. <laughs> What's happening? It's a normal reset. I guess not. Two are in. Here it is. Swung on and fouled right field side. Up near the light pole. We should get these lights at Riverside. Can we do that? You like to have a few more lights or what? Probably not. All right. And Just more bulbs for Bob Schenk to go uh, replace. Oh, change. And the pitching coach is out for... That could be Wozniak as well for Milwaukee King. And it looks like he might be done. We haven't had official an official taking of the ball yet from Jacob Meyer. But a little meeting on the mound for the Generals. So two are in this inning. Craig scored two in the second. It's 4 nothing Craig on six hits here in the top of the third. And the Generals hoping that this doesn't get away. It's a 1-1 count to J.J. Brennan. And now the umpire is coming out to bust things up as we head back to the mound. Uh, gentlemen, we've got two more games left tonight. <laughs> So Meyer will stay on the mound. He's even at a ball and a strike on Brennan. Everybody goes back to their original positions. Before he got on the mound, he faked a quick throw over there. Now he's back at the stretch. And here's the pitch. High and... Um. So I'm not really sure what just happened here. Brennan swung late to give the appearance of a strike, but 
Cusmall is cut down at second, attempting to steal. I don't like a delayed steal. He wasn't going right away either. I don't know. So they got Signals crossed some up. Some hit and run crossed up or something. Regardless, there. Brennan will be the batter when the Cougars start the fourth inning. But for Craig, they plate two runs on three hits again. There are no errors and nobody left. We go to the bottom of the third. It's four nothing, Craig. So Michael Overly back for his third inning. Yet to give up a hit to the Generals. And it'll be Meyer to lead it off his counterpart for Milwaukee King. Followed by Liam Sullivan and Noah Weingarten. Weird ending to that. Very much. Meyer way out in front of that first pitch. If I had to guess, there was supposed to be a hit and run on. Yes. And Cosmo kind of thought the throw was coming over, so he didn't take off. But why the two-second delay? There's a ground ball to second. Hessling has it. Throw over to Malmanger, and there's one up and one down. Why the delayed two-second so, swing from Brennan? Well, I think it crossed everything up when he didn't go. Brennan's like, okay, am I still supposed to cover? Am I supposed to swing to cover like I'm doing a hit and run still? But the ball and was already also, on its way to second. And then, Yeah, I don't know. I think it, all the timing right. just got screwed up from the initial... And move back toward first base. Another freshman, Liam Sullivan, who looks like he's getting his first start and first at bat. Check swing, but a strike from Overly. One up and one down for the Generals here in the bottom of the third. And here's the pitch. Overly bounces one up. That goes over Campbell's left shoulder. Sullivan, the freshman, probably going to need to hit the weight room in a couple of years. Yeah, he's... 1-1 pitch. It's foul back to the rooftop. And there it goes on the other side. Awesome facility here at Fox City. I love coming here. This is great. Attention, Beloit snappers. City of Beloit. This is awesome. 1-2 pitch. Down low and blocked by Campbell, even now at 2-2. Two and two. Is it too late for something like this or not? I guess we'll find it's out getting soon. close. Here it is. Back to the mound. Great stab by Overly, backhanded, and he runs it halfway and flips to Malmanger for the second out on the bouncer. Back to the mound from Sullivan. One to three on the putout. Two up and two down for Noah Weingarten, the left fielder. Oh, Weingarten batting just 67 on the year. He's had 15 at-bats and only three hits. He's in there for his glove. That math doesn't add up to me. Oh, no, he's only got one hit. I'm sorry. And a ball outside to start with from Overly. He's driven in a run, though, and he scored seven, so he's got on base. Another lefty in the order, and Overly's pitch is inside, two and nothing. How are we doing on pitch count? 39. All right. And here it is. 3-0 and oh on the number nine hitter, her nine hitter, Noah Weingarten. Someone needed to point to the scoreboard and make sure Overly knows it's 0-67. Oh, boy. And a four-pitch walk. Yikes. So Overly allows his second runner, second walk of the game, and back to the top of the order, and Nata Panette who walked and then was caught stealing. I was going to say we haven't had anybody test Jacob Campbell since then, but haven't had a chance to. Nobody's gotten on base. We'll see if Weingarten tries to do that for Panette. And the opening pitch from Overly swung on and lofted to right. Coming in on it is Cusmall and makes the catch. So no damage there as there's the third out. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. We've played three here at Fox City Stadium. Janesville Craig four, Milwaukee King nothing. So new pitcher, oh no, Jacob Meyer still back out there for the Generals. Throw goes down to second on the hop. And in the top of the fourth, Craig will send up the six, seven, eight hitters as Brennan will get a fresh count. He's probably excited about that after having to do some weird swing there at the end of the third inning.
Catcher Thomas Panette back to the plate after some words for his pitcher, Jacob Meyer. We got some action in the Craig bullpen. Okay. Now, we're just what we were talking about a little bit. So they got overly at 43 pitches, I think they just yep. said. So if you take him out. Only needs a day of rest. He needs one day of rest. You have him for Thursday, perhaps. Yep. Here's the pitch. And Brennan starts with an inside ball from Jacob Meyer. We've got Jacob Faust, the senior, down there working in the bullpen. All right. 1 0 pitch to Brennan. That's inside or low for ball two. I'm not sure if four nothing is maybe enough to do that, but if you dump it, if you have another inning here where you get it to six or eight or something like that, and there's a strike taken by JJ two and one, you probably can start thinking about gambling a little bit. Uh, here's the thing that I'm looking at: you've gone through the order and one batter, and you haven't allowed a hit yet. There's a ground ball to third, snagged by Sullivan. Throw over to first, and Brennan is gone. Okay, so is that making you think why mess with a good thing, or is that th- making you think, uh, okay, we, we we feel pretty good about well, the fact we can get this lineup out? If you've already you're already saving your ace for the second game, now you're in a good position to the point where some of your relievers can maybe hold it down on a combo and still be available for possibly the next game as Jacob Hessling or Clark Schmeling stands in and takes the strike. Right. you got to at least start thinking about it, right? Right. That, and I think that's probably what's happening. Especially when you got about 14 assistant coaches down there. Somebody's going to have to think of it, right? Blocked by Thomas Panette and a scoop on an inside fastball. One and one even on Clark Schmeling, who drove in a run with a sacrifice with a fly ball to right in the second. Here's the pitch. High for ball two, two and one. All kidding aside, I did think in the pregame when Arrowhead, they announced it, I, it looked like they had almost as many coaches as players. I'm not surprised. Not surprised. Two on the count to Schmeling. Meyer into the windup. Here's the pitch. And there's ball three. The general faithful getting restless. Some of these pitches that look pretty decent that are being called balls. 3-1. And ball four is issued to Clark Schmeling. So the Cougars get a runner for Jacob Hessling with a single and an RBI in the second. He also stole a base. They're getting a little restless out there. That's what I'm saying. I didn't quite get to 100, but I got to about 80 on my my count. Okay. So he's already stolen a base. We'll see whether we try this again. One out for Janesville Craig. Runner on first for Hessling. Here's the pitch. Ball one. This is just just a delay enough where I can't catch exactly where the pitch is on our in-booth monitor. 1-0. And that's an inside strike. You know, that one looked like a ball, but... We could just sit here and watch it on TV. Probably could. It seems a little silly, I guess. That's, I don't really want to do that. 1-1. One, one. And the pitch to Schmeling is popped up. Shallow right. Second base out, right field in. And the catch is made by the second baseman, Daryl Jackson, on pretty, Hessling. Pretty nice catch, really. He had to go, go out did. pretty far for that. And a towering pop-up. You never know what, kind of what the wind's going to do with it. So two down for Janesville Craig. And here's Ross March, who flew out to center field to end the second. Schmeling at first. Craig with a 4 nothing lead. We're in the top of the fourth. Throw over to first, and oh. it goes by him. And a good kick to the first baseman, Manny Akpan. But he throws back to Meyer, and we have our first error of the ball game. And another runner in scoring position. As Schmeling advances to second. They have yet to put that error on the board. But mark it down. That's the fourth game of the day. Uh, they've swapped out people over there. Oh, okay. That's probably smart. Board operators and PA announcers and stuff. Apparently nobody wants to work a full day, I guess. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. But a foul tip from Ross March. And it's 0-1. Mm-hmm. I would almost think about 
sneaking in a little bunt here. The third baseman's back behind third base. First baseman's way back. 0-1. Swung on and fouled. He took that out of play. Now it's 0-2. That that one reached the concourse as it bounced around. So 0-2 to March. Crank with a runner in scoring position as Schmaling has reached second. 4-0 Cougars lead trying to add a fifth. March has been pretty clutch out of that nine spot. And here's the pitch. Swung on, grounder in the hole between short and third. Rounding third. Here comes Schmaling. Here's the throw. It's cut off. Run scores, and the runner's thrown out at second. But Schmaling is in. It's 5 nothing. Craig. March gets caught trying to go to second. Gets the single in the RBI. But the inning is over. So for Janesville Craig, one run on one hit, one error, and nobody left. We go to the bottom of the fourth, and it's now 5 nothing, Janesville Craig. Back here at the bottom of the fourth, here at Fox City Stadium in Grand Chute, Janesville Craig with a 5 to nothing lead. Five runs on seven hits for the Cougars. And so far for the Generals, no hits. They do have one error that they haven't put up on the scoreboard yet. Hey, come on now. Two, three, and four batters due up for Milwaukee Rufus King. It'll start with Daryl Jackson, the freshman second baseman. Opening pitch, overly still in there. Low and inside for ball one. And you had mentioned it during the break there. No call to the bullpen. Overly still out. And here's a second offering. Drops in for a strike. Maybe one run to get to five nothing wasn't quite enough. Maybe they're thinking of a number like seven or eight. Right. But as also we were just saying, here's the pitch. 1-1. One, one. Strike two looking from Jackson. If you're thinking that far ahead and you think you can beat Arrowhead, Overly would be a great starter for the championship game on Thursday if you limit his pitch count here in this inning. 1-2 pitch. Here it comes. Curveball and a little excuse me swing backhanded by Malmanger. Flip to Overly and Jackson is out at first. Nifty play between Malmanger and Overly. And there's one out. So basically, if he throws like three more pitches, I think, then it's when he has to go to the two days off. So if, okay. he, if he throws three more, then they've taken that out of play. So now the batter will be Cameron LaFleur, the center fielder. Curveball hit to center right at Brennan. Backs up a couple of steps. And LaFleur is gone on one pitch. And there's two up and two down. Uh, what are we doing? I think he's just doing defense. Okay. Thought we saw Coach Herps maybe come out and make a pitching change. Instead, it'll be the catcher, Thomas Panette. And the opening pitch from Overly, another curveball up high for ball one. They've decided to go against it. Okay. I don't see any, you know, unless he gets out here, I guess. He'd be at 49, I think. Here's the pitch. Swung on and hit to left. Back on it and over the head of the left fielder, March, and against the wall. Here's the throw to the relay, and it's cut off by Berghammer. And the first base hit for the Generals is a double that is crushed over the head of Ross March for Thomas Panette. So, Overly gives up a double. Here's the freshman right fielder, Kishon Nelson, with a runner in scoring position for Milwaukee King. Boy, that was smoked. It was, and March had a decent beat on it, but he's kind of running backwards toward the wall. Uh, a new stadium, that's uh, going to be a tough play to make any, any place, but definitely when you're playing at a spot for a first time. Panette. A, or I should say Nelson, a strikeout victim. And this was the uh, long at bat, correct? And time called by Nelson in the batter's box. Yeah, 12 pitch at bat for him the first time through. Hung tight before finally going down on strikes. Like that right field line. Opening pitch from Overly. Here it is. Swung on and fouled. Dribbled up along the foul line, and Coach Yacher will... Nope. Oh, no, that's is that Coach Clowder? Nope. That's, is that? that's the King first base coach. So. Oh, duh. What am I thinking of? <laughs> Holy <laughs> moly. I can't tell you for it's sure. Been, it's been a long day here. I'm, could, could thank by you chance for that. be, uh, I'll be all right. Sam Schaefer? <laughs> I'll wow. go with it. Jeez. What in the world? 
So 0-1 to Nelson. Here's the second offering. And a pit throw back down to second. Hits the runner and scoots away. And the runner's going to go to third. No throw from Malmanger as they just hang on to it. Campbell's throw on the left side of second base. Got into the runner, Panette, and scooted away towards where Hessling is normally set up. So Panette will go down, and now they'll charge that error to Campbell on the free base. I haven't put up the one from Milwaukee no. King, but real, real quick to do it on Craig, I see. Okay, There's a fly ball foul third base side. It'll make the seats, and it'll be one and two on Keyshawn Nelson. It wasn't a bad idea. I mean, uh, no, it wasn't. And that was definitely pretty far off a of second base, but the uh, throw just uh, a little low. We're in the bottom of the fourth. It's five nothing, Craig. Two down for King. Runner at third. Here's the pitch. Check swing and a ball. I think we've got both sides now fairly unhappy with the own plate umpire. The groans come out. They wanted a strike out there on Nelson. Instead, it's two and two. And the pitch from Overly coming up. Here it is. Curveball. Hit foul. Third base and will also make the seats. So we'll do it again at two and two on Keyshawn Nelson. One of four freshmen in the lineup for the Generals. Overly comes set, checks third. Blomgren not holding the runner. Here it comes. Curveball and outside corner for strike three. Nelson goes down, and the inning is over. They keep the generals off the board. No runs, one hit, one error, and one man left. We're through four. Janesville Craig five, Milwaukee King nothing. Josh Goldberg and Eric Schmoltz and Fox City Stadium on what's turned out to be a pretty awesome day for baseball. Yeah, sun came out. Uh... Clouds, the darker ones at least, have gone away. Yep. Two more games for tonight. It'll be Green Bay Preble, who eliminated Kimberly. And then did Wanakee beat Eau Claire North? I think they did. They did. 11-7, so I want to Wanakee and Green Bay Preble will follow this game. And then Arrowhead awaits the winner of Craig and Milwaukee King. But Cougars right now in the driver's seat. Five errors, I think, for Eau Claire North in that first game. Of the no day. way. Yeah. Ouch. A little too early right. for a game, maybe. Yeah, possibly. So back to the top of the lineup. Here's Dan Blumgren to lead it off. Third time he's done that today. The first and third inning. And a inside ball to start with from Meyer. He's one and two with a stolen base and a run scored. Here's a bunt pulled back and ball two on the outside from Blomgren. Craig with a healthy five to nothing lead. Two and zero the count to the Cougar third baseman. Myers kicks and fires. Down low for ball three. Nobody up in the general's bullpen. I don't think they're carrying that many guys on the roster either. No, I mean, you look down there, there's, you can basically just see the coaches. Right. And the pitch. There's a strike. Blomgren was two steps heading to the bag and comes back into the batter's box. Three and one the count. And the pitch. Swung on and belted down the line and left just foul into the bullpen area. He was trying to follow Berghammer's lead. Holy moly. That was smoked. So Blomgren will now have a full count on him from Jacob Meyer. As we step back in, top of the fifth here in Grand Chute. Meyer gets what he wants. Here's the windup and the pitch. Blomgren to right center. That's going to fall for a base hit. And it's going to get by the right fielder into the gap and roll all the way to the warning track. Blomgren is flying around second. He's coming to third. Here's the throw. It's still in the outfield. He's going to go home. We're going to have an inside the park home run from Dan Blomgren. And it's six to nothing, Janesville Craig. 
<laughs> wow! Tough angle for the right fielder really on that was. one. And then once it got by him, it was all the way out to that 405 sign, and that's a long run. That's the deepest part of the park, and the, the throw from the outfield was still probably halfway to the infield when it was cut off. And the way Blomgren runs, good grief. So a home run inside the park for Blomgren. And Craig now up six to nothing, and the batter will be Jacob Campbell. Can't say that I've seen one of those in a while. No kid. His first home run of the year. Still counts, folks. Absolutely. Outside and high on Campbell, and it's one and zero. And we talked in the pregame about uh, Craig scoring inning, inning, inning. And right. this is now the fourth inning in a row where they've put a run on the board. Campbell takes a curveball outside corner for a strike, evening it up at one and one. So Blomgren with an inside the Parker to lead off the fifth. Here's the pitch. Swung on and hit to short. Backhanded just out of the reach of the shortstop, Nata Panette. And Campbell will get a base hit. Craig's... Ninth hit of the ball game and a runner for Luke Malmanger. How long do you leave Meyer in there? Well, I, I don't. What other do they have? Other options? Well, they have to. They have pitchers. They don't they just go with Meyer all year. So Campbell aboard, and the bunt attempt is taken back by Malmanger, but taken for a strike. There's that little. Little looky Lou over to <laughs> huh? Bobblehead. Yeah. Head on a swimmel f- swivel for Meyer, and now he steps off. Meyer's pointing over near third. I don't know whether he is not liking what Coach Herps is saying or what. He's done that a couple of times, and he points in that direction. 0 1 the count to Mulmanger. And here's the pitch. Down low for a ball. Campbell thought about going as it was mishandled by Thomas Panette. Behind the plate, but picked up. 6 nothing. Craig, top of the fifth. Nine hits for the Cougars. And an error. And the 1-1 upcoming. Campbell goes, and Malmanger to right. Campbell's going to have to go back as it's right to the right fielder. Campbell didn't watch the ball. Throw back to first is on the money, and it's a double play. So Malmanger with a fly to right for the first out, and then doubled off first is Campbell, who was sitting on second and didn't know where the ball went. No, and I think he had a little conversation there with Coach Youcher, and he said, were you yelling back? And he's like, yeah, I yelled, well, I didn't hear you. <laughs> Well, that's all right. That's a little bit of a killer, but six nothing. It feels a little bit better than if it's a one run ball game. Right. Opening pitch to Noah Berghammer is high for a ball. Two down now in the inning quickly for the Cougar shortstop, who's one for two today with a double and a run scored. Strikeout victim back in the third. 1 0 pitch for Berghammer is taken for a strike. One run is in for Craig. Here's the pitch. And down low for a ball. Two and one on Berghammer. So one run on two hits so far this inning. It's two and one, and here comes Myers wind up and the pitch. Swung on and fouled over the back of the stadium and into the parking lot. Check your cars. They're a little bit farther away than they are at Riverside. (laughs) I don't think you have to worry about that. You just worry about the fans that might be mingling outside. Yeah, getting ready for the next one. Right. 2-2 pitch. Swung on and hit to the gap in right center. Back on it, and it's that one's going to get to the warning track. Berghammer's going to have his second double of the game. Boy, did he smack that one. Just left of the 405 sign, deep part of the park. And Berghammer's second double, Craig's 10th hit. And now the batter will be Tresson Cusmall. I just like to make those outfielders work out there. Let's Holy get, moly. Get your run on. Cusmall with an RBI and a single, and he also bunted on a fly to the pitcher. Quick pitch. That's in there for a strike. 
multi-hit game for Blomgren and Berghammer here in this quarterfinal. 6-0, trying to be 7 if Cusmall can drive in Berghammer at second. Long lead. Nobody's holding him. And here comes the second baseman, but there's the pitch. It's outside a ball. One and one on Tresson Cusmall. Berghammer away from second. Now here's the pickoff play and no throw. I think Berghammer's having a little fun out there, just trying to make him think about it. For sure. Still away from second, and now another turn and no throw. <laughs> Meyer's like, come on, really? At this point, with two outs, he should just get the batter. One and one on Cusmall. I mean, it's not like you're giving another couple of minutes for the guy to warm up in the bullpen. No, and I think really it is affecting him. Ball on the outside for Cusmall. Two and one the count. And no pickoff move. Instead, a quick pitch. Cusmall to center, but right at Cameron LaFleur. And that will do it for the inning. One run on three hits. No errors. One man left for the Cougars. Bottom of five coming up. It's 6 nothing. Janesville Craig. Back at Fox City Stadium for the bottom half of inning number five. And the Generals will send up their six, seven, eight hitters, starting with Manny Akpan, the first baseman, a strikeout victim, and already behind 0-1 on Micah Overly, who's pitching a pretty good one here today. Akpan struck out to end the second. And that one outside a ball from Overly. Overly's got three strikeouts today, two swinging, one looking. Here's the 1-1, fouled back to the netting behind home plate, and it's 1-2. and two. Not a very stressful day for him. Not too many base no. runners. They, nope. they got one into scoring position last inning so that he uh, remembered what that felt like, I guess. <laughs> And here's the pitch. Curveball inside corner, strike three, and Akpan is gone. One up and one down for Jacob Meyer, the pitcher who grounded to second in the third. He's 0 for 1. Wind up and the opening pitch from Overly. Swung on and popped up behind home plate. Campbell's got room, plenty of room, and makes the catch. Two up and two down. For Liam Sullivan, the third baseman. Liam Sullivan. Grounded back to Overly on a pretty good play and a backhand by the pitcher. On the flip to Malmanger, that was in the third. Moving right along here in the bottom of the fifth. Overly's first offering. Swung on and fouled out of the mitt of Jacob Campbell. Heartland Arrowhead awaits the winner. Which right now, Craig, surely in the driver's seat. Here's the pitch. There's a strike. 0-2 on Sullivan. Outside of the two walks, there's only been two batters even in this whole game that have got to a two-ball count. Oof. Good good nugget there. I like that. 0-2. Down low, a ball. One and two. Here's the windup from Overly to Sullivan. Ball down low. Just as I say it, right? <laughs> 2-2 two, two, the count on the freshman who's playing third for the Generals. Quick wind-up from Overly, all business, and that's a ball. Wow, where was that? That one I even looked at on the monitor. Do we have a K zone in this? No, okay. Full count pitch, here it comes. Swung on and fouled right field just off the line by about six or eight feet. As Cusmall tracks it down and throws it back in play. I mean, I realize his strike zone is a little shorter than uh, many of the other guys on this field today. I but guess. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, 
Still full. We'll do it again on Sullivan. Overly gets the sign from Campbell. Here he comes. Strike three called and three up, three down. Two punch outs for Overly. He's got five, and we are through five. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. It's six to nothing. Craig, top of the six coming up. Throwdown from Thomas Panette to second on the hop. Taken by Nata Panette. And top of the six here for Janesville Craig. J.J. Brennan will lead it off, followed by Clark Schmaling and Jacob Hessling. 6 nothing, Craig. Cougars, I'm sure, would want to slam the door if they could right now. The giant cardboard heads have apparently been unloaded from wherever they were being stored over here. How do we get those into the stadium and not see them? Okay, that's fine. Myers first pitch to Brennan inside, right near his feet for ball one. Brennan with a single and a run scored. He's also grounded to third. And he's got a 1-0 count. Outside a ball, I guess. 2-0. The King faithful should be happy they're not getting that call either. Inside, 3-0. Brennan way ahead in the count. General's bullpen still quiet. Yeah, they're going to have to switch here sooner or later. We're up what, what are we about doing? 90 pitches okay. here. And here it is. High for ball four. Brennan takes the leadoff walk. So Schmeling will be the batter. Clark with an RBI on a sack fly. A walk and a run scored. Brennan's at first. Ten hits for the Cougars. And the throw over to first on the fake, and that's a box. Can't do that. He paused, and you could tell Meyer is fairly rattled. Akpan is going to return. Akpan is going to return the ball to him from first base. Just said, "Relax, dude. You're almost done anyway. You got like nine pitches left." <laughs> he did like that. So a balk called on Meyer. The one time where his little bobble thing didn't go, didn't right. go to the plate after that. And here comes the coach for Milwaukee King. We'll see whether we have a pitching change. I think Meyer's all used up. It, it looks physically. like he's ready for one. Yeah. yeah. Ball has not been taken as of yet. Maybe the coach saying, can you g- give me one more batter here? Again, I would have no idea why that would be. But second mound visit for Milwaukee King. It's 6 to nothing. We're in the top of the sixth. He's allowed 10 hits. If you're wondering what the record is for most hits allowed in a Division One game. I was just thinking that, 20. actually. Okay. That was a 13-inning game, so that yeah. helps. But that was back in the 50s when even when you played 13 innings, you just let one guy throw the whole time and give up all 20 hits. So Meyer's going to stay on for how many more? Uh, You know, 10. Get me out of here. Anytime now. Yep. So, and it looks like Panette's going to go take the gear off, I think. So, we're going to have a pitching change. We'll check the defensive changes. But Jacob Meyer is done. One run is in for Craig, and there's a runner on second. Top of the sixth. Seven nothing. Cougars with the lead. Pretty much this game has gone... We said, don't overlook anybody, but I yep. think this has gone about what people kind of expected. Yeah. Cougars, bats, getting it done. Pretty much, let's see, everybody, does everybody have a hit at this point? Mm, no. Hessling is the only, oh yeah, yep, yeah. yes, everybody Everyone does. Everyone has a hit. Everybody does. 
Got to mark that in the scorebook. All right, we're set to play. Hessling steps in, and here's the opening pitch from Panette, high and outside. 1-0. I, I knew that because I felt like I had put every single uh, Twitter handle <laughs> that I has played in this game in, onto Twitter. There you go. 1-0 the count. Panette's second offering is a little too high. Ball two. Curious to see how the strike zone is for our finale tonight. Which at this point will feature Craig and Arrowhead. Here it is. Swung on bouncer to third. Slow. Here's Natapanet up with it. Strong throw over to shortstop. And the out is recorded for number one. Moving to third is Schmeling. So Hessling is gone. And now here's Ross March, the left fielder. Opening pitch from Panette to March. A little bit of a slow-moving curveball. And March swings and misses. It's 0-1-1. Ross today with a single, an RBI, and got caught trying to move it to second. Another swing and a miss. It's 0-2. He's also got a fly to center. I think we've seen Craig struggle the most this year with guys that have... uh... Not throwing a whole lot of cheese, I guess, is the one way to put it. I like that. 0-2 pitch. Another one. And March just gets a piece of it and fouls it into the batter's box. And uh, I think it's safe to say that Panette fits that bill. I would say. At this point, I haven't. Have we seen a fastball? Well, it seems to uh, be a change of it. Okay, here it is. Another swing and a miss, and March is gone. Two down as the left fielder goes down on strikes to the top of the order, and Dan Blomgren. One, Dan. Well, if that's if the fastball is changeup speed, again, those 60-some strikeouts. Yeah. As we alluded to. And the catcher, Manny Akpan, is out with a word for Thomas Panette. Blumgren with an inside the home, uh, inside the park homer. He's got a single and a stolen base. He scored twice. Pretty good job out of the leadoff spot for Dan Blumgren. Ever since that first inning, it's just been constant yep. traffic on the base. Three up, three down in that first, and then Craig went to work. Seven to nothing so far, top of the sixth. Run is in, runner at third. Here it is. In the dirt, blocked by Panette, and has to reach under the umpire to go get it. Who stood with concrete shoes. <laughs> Did not move. <laughs> the ball just sat right there. Yep. 1-0 the count to Blumgren. Here it is. Swing and a base hit back up the middle, and it's 8 nothing. Janesville Craig. Another RBI for Blumgren. His third hit. And it is now 8 nothing Cougars. Two hits in the inning, and two runs are in. Is Blomgren going to go on the first pitch or the second pitch? Do you, think? you know they're going to run on Panette. Here's Jacob Campbell. One for three today. And a quick move, and the runner is back. Looks like Meyer wanted an appeal at second. Thought he had him. <laughs> Blumgren with a huge lead and throw back, and he's in there. <laughs> I don't know what Meyer's looking at. Uh, I think he's just, I don't know, hopefully he's just having fun at this point. Boy, yeah, losing if eight. Being, if he's being serious, then his. Uh, losing 8 nothing with one hit is a, just a ball at, at the state <laughs> tournament. Here's the pitch square to bunt is Campbell, and it goes by the uh, batter, Ekpan, and Blumgren thought about taking third, and now he is going to go to third. Wow! Ekpan, no hurry to get that ball back into Panette, the pitcher, and he takes two bases. Nobody was covering home. Blumgren thought about your going to the plate. Wow. So all the way to third goes Dan Blumgren and now Campbell. I don't know what that pitch was. He well, squared the button drew back. I and think it's a ball. <laughs> Here.
Here's the pitch to Campbell. Inside and low. Now the scoreboard not bothering with any. Okay, there we go. Two and nothing. On the Cougar catcher. Here's the pitch. In there for a strike. Two and one. Runner at third is Blumgren. Open the 2 1 here to Campbell. Swings and fouls one third base into the outfield. And watch the truck. Ooh, I thought that was going to break a truck window Me out too. there. And it sends the kids scrambling for the foul ball. Two and two even now on Jacob Campbell. And the pitch from Pinette. Oh, Campbell waved at it, went around, and a strikeout victim again. And the inning is over. Two runs, two hits, no errors, and one man left. We go to the bottom of the sixth. Craig expands the lead. It's 8 nothing Cougars. So Overly will try and go back out and close this. Well, he's got two more innings of work. It's the bottom of the sixth for... Rufus King and the 9-1-2 spots are due up in this inning for the Generals. 8-0 Craig as Noah Weingarten, who worked to walk and was stranded back in the third, will come to the plate. Gin Blossom's coming July 12th. <laughs> Thank you for that for that update. Appreciate it. You coming back for that or not? Opening act will be Deceiving Stats. <laughs> Which uh, genre TBD still? Maybe, maybe they'll maybe they're alt. I don't know. Here's the opening pitch, and it's hit to short. Berghammer with a sliding attempt on it, but a base hit for Noah Weingarten right up the middle. Little soft looper that was just out of the reach of a sliding Berghammer, and the second hit for the Generals today. And it's a leadoff single. And back to the top of the order for Nata Panette, who is 0 for 1. A fly to right and a walk. He was also caught stealing. So Weingarten at first. And here's Overly's pitch. Strike. Looking from Panette. How many we out here? For Overly? Yep. You've seen Jacob. 70, okay. 71. Right. I mean, those. that's not really, I don't think, the issue. I think it's just, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if next inning they try to get a bunch of guys in just to try to give them a little state action just to sure. say they played at state. 0-1 pitch. Hit to second. Could be two. Throw to Hessling. Pulls him off the bag. Miscommunication between Hessling and Berghammer. Who is going to take that one? And it results in one out. Probably should have been two easily. Probably should have. I think Hessling called for it. And okay. he was there to do it. And, uh, Throw took him the, off the bag. Yeah, I think Overly was kind of throwing toward Noah more. But got the lead runner at least. Yep. So a fielder's choice on a one to four put out. And now here's Daryl Jackson. Uh, looks like we're going to get a pinch hitter. And A.J. Paya. It looks like they're going to say A.J. Paya. Okay. So A.J. Paya will bat for Daryl Jackson. Paya in the lineup. A senior and getting in at bat here at State in place of the freshman. And Overlease pitch. Drifts outside for a ball. Still a runner at first. This time it's Panette. He was caught stealing in the first. And I would imagine Campbell remembers that. <laughs> Try him again. Okay. Yep. Here's Overly's second offering. Inside corner a strike. One and one on A.J. Paya. Listed as a first baseman. Paya batting 227 on the year. That one in the dirt blocked by Campbell. Two and one. Late stages here. We're in the bottom of the sixth. It's 8 nothing Craig. A two-hit shutout so far from Overly. Heartland Arrowhead awaits. 
And here's the pitch. Outside from Overly, a little bit of an overthrow there, and it's 3-1. and one. Don't know why you need to be overthrown at this stage in the game. No, I don't either. Hey, it is the the biggest player, so maybe he's for sure. You know, a little daunting. Three one pitch. Here it is. Hit right back up the middle. Hessling's got it. Flip to Berghammer. Easy double play, and Noah throws it into the stands. Oh, almost made the stands. Hit the wall near the Brewers dugout and careened back to Malmanger. Again, two easy double plays. And Berghammer's going to earn himself an error on that one. I don't think so. No? Because you don't... You don't runner uh, didn't advance? Runner didn't advance, okay. and you can't assume the double play. Got so. it. Okay. So, they again trade an out at second for a runner at first. Maybe we can convince Bear, though, to go put up that error for Milwaukee <laughs> King like, about an hour ago. Rope still haven't yet. put that one up no on the No kidding. So, now the batter will be... Cameron LaFleur, and he takes a strike in the outside corner. Hasn't been able to add to his 2024 run scored this season, unfortunately, for him today. <laughs> so two outs. LaFleur will be the batter. He's 0 for 2 today. Grounded to Malmanger, or I should say flown to center, and grounded to Hessling. Here's the pitch. Backhanded by Campbell. And it's one and one. Overly comes set. Nobody holding the runner at first. Here's the pitch. Ball two. Two and one. Wanakee and Green Bay Preble do next. As the Division One semifinals, then they'll play Divisions Two, Three, and Four tomorrow. Lafleur wanted time, didn't get it. Hits it to short. Berghammer to Hessling, and the side is retired. No runs, but one hit, no errors, and one man left. Top of the seventh coming up. Still Craig with an eight to nothing lead. We'll return after this from Budget Truck and Auto Body and Blackhawk Community Credit Union on WCLO Janesville Beloit and online at WCLO.com. Have we decided, what is this officially called? Is it Grand Chute or is it Appleton? Or is it Grand Chute in Appleton? Uh, I think Grand Chute. Okay. Well, I'm not going to call it Appleton anymore then. Neuroscience like when, Group Field. Uh, you know, if, if they're playing at the Rush Center, where would you say that is that? Green Bay. Yeah. I don't, Isn't it a, in a Schwabenon or something? <laughs> right. Exactly. Okay. All right. So the batter will be Luke Ballmanger to lead things off in the top of the seventh. Thomas Panette still on the mound for Milwaukee King and opens up with the ball outside to Malmanger, who is one for three today. Here's the pitch. Two and nothing. Missed upstairs. Malmanger with a couple of flies to right, a single and an RBI, a run scored, and a stolen base. That one up high. Three and nothing from Panette. Doesn't really matter if you 10 run them right now. Here's Malmanger. And takes a leadoff walk. I think all four of those pitches were the exact same, in the exact same spot. Probably. Berghammer will be the batter. He's got two hits, both of them doubles. Sandwiched around a strikeout. He's also got a run scored. Twelve hits for Janesville Craig. Malmanger at first. And a move, and Luke in safely with a head first slide. <laughs> Meyer looks back at the umpire, are you sure? Before he throws the ball back to the pitcher. And another quick move, and Malmanger is back. <laughs> begging, you, just I, begging for it. I don't know what you guys are looking at. <laughs> Still no pitch yet to Berghammer. And now <laughs> and that steps off. He's a little he's a little rattled. Are we worried about the runner at first at this point in an eight nothing game? Yeah, exactly. Meanwhile these semifinal teams are saying, can we just get this over with, please? There's a strike to Noah Berghammer. Taken on the outside. 
Malmanger away from first. It's 0-1 on the Cougar shortstop. Top of the seventh, it's 8 nothing. Here's the pitch from Panette. Malmanger goes, outside pitch, throw down, and is not in time. And the ball scoots away. Malmanger thought about it for a second before uh, Nata Panette runs it down in shallow right center. So Malmanger with another stolen base. His second, and now a runner on second and nobody out for Berghammer as the pitch was taken outside. One and one on Noah. That checks second. Nobody holding Luke. Here it is. Berghammer takes the ball. Two and one. Six outs remaining in the ball game. And the opening pitch, or not the two-one pitch rather, taken for a strike. Two and two now on Berghammer. He thought he might have, should have swung at that one. Well, they give him one more at least. And 2 2 count now. Here it is. Swung on and missed. And into the catcher's mitt on a foul tip as Berghammer goes down on strikes for one out. And now the batter will be Tresson Kussmall. One for three today with an RBI. It's also caught stealing. But everybody in the lineup with a hit for the Cougars. Smallmanger still at second. Here's the pitch. Chai Chopper foul, third base side. Just out of reach of Liam Sullivan, the third baseman. And it will roll into the bullpen area. And nobody from King wants to get it. Yeah, later. Hey, you. Max Helling, sophomore. Get out there. Somebody on that. Yep. 0-1 the count to Cussmall. Nobody holding Malmanger at second. And here it is. Swing and a miss out in front of that one was Cussmall. Just by a little. (laughs) Oh, man. Late stages here. We're going to be about... Probably at this point, half an hour behind our original broadcast time. So, if Craig can hang on, so everybody catch a nap during the first semifinal. Got to go track down Coach Herbst and throw some pregame stuff together. Here it is, swing and a foul by Cusmall. Still 0-2. Not as worried about you as maybe some of our listeners at home if they're going oh, to sure. be in this thing for the long haul tonight. You can time to catch a little cat nap, cook dinner, and get all the family stuff out of the way, and then. Curl up around the box radio just like the old days, the living room. <laughs> if somebody does that, please tweet a picture at me. <laughs> 0 2 to Cusmall. Here comes Panette out of the stretch. Swing and a grounder to third. Sullivan's got it on a bounce. High throw to first, but the out is made. Malmanger sits. <laughs> Listener bringing up a very good point on an 8 nothing victory. No need for a nap. I took one this game. Oh, zing. So two down on the putout. And J.J. Brennan will be the batter. He's got a hit today. A walk, two runs scored. Ballmanger still out at second. Opening pitch, low and inside for a ball on Brennan. He's trying to keep the streak going here. We had six innings in a row with or at least a run would be good, right? Sure. One zero down low for two and nothing on Brennan. King will send up the four, five, and six spots in the bottom of the seventh. the count to Brennan. Panette out of the stretch. Here's the pitch. High chopper to short. Third base, Sullivan jumps in front of it, and Brennan beat it. Infield single. Sullivan thought he had him. Brennan with good hustle down the line, and his second hit is an infield single. Malmanger to third. Runners at the corners, and two out for Clark Schmaling, the DH. 
Schmaling with two hits. Check that. He's got one hit. And that was a. He hit it hard enough that double. it was almost like two. <laughs> and that was a double and an RBI. He scored two runs, also had a walk. Check on the runner at first. Meyer thinks he's got him, but no. Again. So no pitch yet to Schmeling. And here it is. Strike one looking by Clark. Hessling with a bat in the on-deck circle. Craig up eight to nothing. Top of the seventh. What was that? I don't know what that was. Panette just looked at first and faked the throw, and the Brennan was still on the bag. 0-1. In the dirt, blocked by Akpan. Akpan, you can tell, is not your prototypical high school catcher. I think he's probably more comfortable at first. When the coach comes and tells you to put the gear on. You put the gear on. <laughs> you just right. put it on. Either. Sure, coach. It's seven or eight to nothing, right? 1-1 one, one pitch. Outside, 2-1. and one. Heartland Arrowhead waiting for the Cougars to finish this one off. And then it'll be Warhawks and the Cougars. There's a swing from... Schmaling foul oh. off the light pole it right in front of the truck. truck. It was headed for the truck. Maybe that's why they park it there. Good blocker. I guess. But that steps off. It's two and two now to Clark Schmaling. Cougars trying to close out this quarterfinal and move on to the semis. Here it is. And an excuse me swing off a seat in the first row past the Cougars' dugout. That's one of those where you might think about extending the netting. Everybody good down there? Thank you, Bob. Everybody good? Kids are like, did you see that? It's right there. Still 2-2 two and two on Schmaling. Malmanger at third, Brennan at first. Panette. Checks the runners, comes set, here's the pitch. And a swing and a miss. And down goes Schmeling. So for Janesville Craig, they can't score any, but they do get one hit in the inning. No errors, two men left. We go to the bottom of the seven. Three more outs for Craig to move on. It's eight to nothing. Janesville Craig. Josh Goldberg and Eric Schmolt, new pitcher for Janesville Craig to try and close this one out will be Jacob Faust. Faust comes in with the lowest ERA on the Cougars. He's thrown 28 and a third innings. He's 4-0. He's appeared in eight games. He's got four saves. Or I should say four starts, rather. No saves. But a .99 ERA. He's given up 28 hits and only four earned runs. Pretty good strikeout to walk ratio, 23-5. to five. Not a save situation here. Uh, no. <laughs> no. So it'll be Thomas Panette to lead it off. And takes the ball outside from Faust to start with. So Overly is done. Six shutout innings for the Cougar starter on two hits. Here it is from Faust. Low for ball two. And here's the windup. Swung on and fouled back to the top of the mezzanine level here at Fox City Stadium. Awesome stadium. Love coming here. Tim Rattler's doing it right for the Class A club of the Brewers. Here's the pitch. Up high for ball three. Three and one now on Panette. He's got one of the two hits for the Generals. It was a double back in the fourth. Wind up and the pitch from Faust. Outside corner a strike. And it's full now on Thomas Panette. Would have to think Faust would be a, an option for Thursday yep. if they can make their. Here's the pitch and another foul. Right field side heading towards the truck. Ooh, just shy. 
another strike thrower, and uh, <laughs> the thing with him is kind of his his delivery. It's deceptive, and it's hard to kind of pick the ball up because it's... Comes behind his head. There's a rip to the gap in left center. Outfielders are playing deep, and Panette's going to be held to a single as the throw comes on to Berghammer from March in left field. And Panette with two hits. Pretty good hitter. And the Generals start the seventh with a base hit. And now it'll be a pinch batter for Keyshawn Nelson. Nolan Botcher will be the batter. And yes, I had to listen to the PA guy to catch that pronunciation. He's just guessing. Probably. I think the coaches give him a pronunciation guide, I would imagine. So runner at first, Botcher at the plate. Also a freshman. Has no official at bat this season. Uh, Now's as good a time as any. I guess. But I can light it up in BP, coach. Here's the pitch from Faust. Strike one, looking. I would just come out of I would have swung right at the first pitch. <laughs> what do you got to lose at this point? Runner away from first is Panette. Faust comes set. And the 0-1. Oh. Ball's one. Maybe he's getting paid by the, the pitch. The pitch. Okay. I'll go with you on that. I thought it was by game, but, you know. 1-1 one, one pitch from Faust. Swing and a miss. Out in front was Botcher. Six innings, five strikeouts, two walks, two hits, no runs for Overly. Not terrible. 8 nothing. our score. Here's the 1-2 curveball, big sweeper, and upstairs. Evens it at two balls and two strikes. Craig, three outs away from... Advancing to face Heartland Arrowhead later on tonight. There's a swing and a miss. Strike three, and Botcher is gone. Hope you enjoyed your varsity experience. I got to play at State. What did you do? Struck out. Now Manny Akpan, the catcher, started at first base. 0 for 2 with two strikeouts. One swinging, one looking. Still a runner at first. First pitch from Faust, and a swing and a miss from Akpan. Calling time and getting back in there. Faust is ready. He's on. He's uh, out of the stretch. Here it is. Popped up. Might stay in. Campbell will get it. Campbell will get it. Behind the plate on the grass, and there's two outs. One out away from advancing to face Heartland Arrowhead, and it'll be Jacob Meyer, the first baseman who started the game on the mound. He's 0 for 2. Runner at first for Meyer, the lefty. He's grounded to second and popped to Campbell. Swing and a miss on the opener from Faust. Faust all business. Here in his relief opportunity. I know he was excited to try to get to play at State. 0 1 the count. Here's the pitch. Outside corner a strike. 0 2 to Meyer. Wondering where some of those were when he was on the mound. <laughs> He's been wondering a lot of things. He has. The last he really has. has. Two down, 0 2 pitch coming up. Campbell sets up outside. Can't get Meyer to chase. Can't get a Riverside strike. Well, we're not at so Riverside. It'll be one and two. We've seen a couple. Most calls have gone the other way. Squeezed. True. Very true. One two pitch coming up. Faust comes set. And he delivers. Swing and a miss. Meyer is gone. Throws his bat. Throws his helmet. And the Cougars are moving on to the semifinals. No runs, a hit, no errors. One man left. Final score, Janesville Craig, eight. And Milwaukee King, nothing. We'll be back to wrap it up here at Fox City Stadium after this from Pomps Tire and DuPont Pioneer on WCLO Janesville Beloit and online at WCLO.com. When you work the land... 
you know, out there in some far corner of a field, there's an old steel fence post that has your number. And that's when you should have ours. We're your certified Firestone Farm Tire dealer. And when you need service, give us a call. We're specially trained and equipped to handle all your on-farm, in-field tire repair and replacement needs. For fast in-field service, call Pops Tire Service, Newville Road, Janesville.